And now, tonight's presentation of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Tonight, the story of a fishing cruise and bait that was a life insurance policy. We call it Over the Bounding Main. So now, starring Mr. Tony Barrett, here is tonight's suspense play, Over the Bounding Main. Thanks, Marty. When are you going to put a light in this garage? I'm sorry, honey. I forgot. Oh, I forgot. You forgot. Too bad you can't forget to wake up some morning. Now, look, just because you had a couple too many drinks at the Warrens, you don't have to get nasty. I had too many. Are you kidding? I watched you. Don't think I didn't. Oh, come on. Let's go in, huh? I've got to be downtown early. For what? So you can make enough to buy a house at Catalina like the Warrens? Get a new car, there's a little thing called money, but you wouldn't know. You've got to find the right job. Look, are we going over that again? Yes, we're going over that again. I'm ashamed when I go out. Did you see what she was wearing? Will you keep your voice down? The neighbors... You say that again and I'll kill you. You'll be sorry in the morning. I'll be sorry, all right. Sorry like every other morning. Because you'll be here. I guess a lot of it was my fault. I wanted the right kind of a job. It was hard to find. Ever since Claire had got rid of Lou Barris, her ex, we've been living pretty close, and Claire just wasn't used to it. The Warrens made it worse. They were well healed, and I was supposed to keep up with the Warrens. I knew I could never do it. Maybe Claire knew, too. Claire had got the invitation for us to go with the Warrens to Catalina. So now we were driving down 22nd Street and San Pedro to the landing. It was nearly three in the morning and very dark. There was a light fog drifting in the harbor. Don't forget to lock it. Sure. sure. Look out for the fishing rods, will you? You better give me the keys. You're so careless. I won't lose them. I know you, all that junk in your pockets. You'll lose them. Don't worry. Huh? I will. Why don't you let me hang on to them? We'll be in a nice mess if you... All won't... right, all right. Here, take them. Thank you, dear. I guess we were the first ones here. I don't see Bob's car. Oh, uh, I forgot to tell you. We're meeting them at the Isthmus. On the island? Yes. They've been there all week. You didn't say anything about it. I thought... Well, for Pete's sake, what difference does it make? If you're worrying about chartering a boat to get us there, you can stop. It's all arranged. Bob's paying for it. They know you're broke. Sure, sure. You blabbed that to everyone. I was a great guy when I had it, huh? Well, you lost it, so let's not talk, shall we? That's okay with me. That must be the boat down there. The Pelican? Is that the name? I think so. Uh, yes, that's it. Watch your step, huh? Why the devil you wear shoes like that on a fishing trip? Because they're all I have. Hello. Anyone aboard? One minute, senor. The senor Evans? Yeah, that's right. Uh, come aboard, sir. If I may help the lady. Uh, thanks. Oh, you can sure tell this is a fishing boat. You uh, the captain on the stuff? <laughs> oh, no, sir. I'm Ignacio. They can't. I help run the engine. <laughs> Thought you looked a little young. Where is he? Uh, he went there short for a minute, senor. Well, I'm ready any time he is. Uh, here, Sonny, take my stuff below. Uh, si, senora, right away. Smart looking kid, huh? Oh, gosh. I'm sleepy. Mm. Now you wake up when we get going. Oh, boy. Oh, I smell that air. You know, honey, I, I, I think we're going to have fun. Well, there must be a bunk somewhere. I'm going below. Ah, oh, come on. Stay with me. I'm sleepy. Okay, but you'd be sorry. I'm going to start trolling as soon as we clear the harbor. Oh, wake me up when we get there. Senor, there is a captain coming down the dock. Oh? Oh, yeah. yeah. Now we get started, huh? Yes. I, uh, I read where the albacore running. Well, it may be, senor. I've only been working on the pelican for two days. Oh. All set? Yes, Captain Moran. 
Let's go then. Uh, I'm Mr. Evans. The wife is below taking a nap. Hi. Cast off! All clear! You, uh, think this fog will lift? Might. Any idea how far offshore we might hit Albuquerque? No telling. No. Uh, how long do you figure for us to reach Catalina? That's on the fog. Oh. Well, I, I guess I'll go and get my outfit rigged up. Yeah. Why don't you do that? You sure that feather's the best lure for him? Oh, I've got many albacore with it, senor. If they're hungry, they'll take it. But uh, this time of night, you'll probably only get shark. Well... Hey, 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 stop the boat. Hey, strike, senor. Let him take it. Give him life. Ha! Give it to him. He's got it. <laughs> Count five, senor. Uh, uh, slow. Uh, slow. Now, now, senor. Strike him. A big one, senor. Hey, I'll say. Hey, hey, stop the boat, will you? What's the matter with him? I'm going to lose my line. I can't hold him. Brace yourself against the rail, senor. Look, go tell that fool to stop the boat, will you? Yes, Capitan. A strike. Uh, senor, look out. The rail. Uh, uh, are you hurt, senor? No. Thanks. If you had to push me, I'd have gone over. I, I cannot understand the rail breaking. What the devil was Moran trying to do? We could have been killed. You tell him to stop. He speeds up. Perhaps he did not hear. Yeah, well, I want a few words with that joke. Hey, you. You know, I almost went under the drink. The rail at the stern broke. Oh, that's too bad. I'll have to get it fixed. Yeah. What the devil were you trying to do? The kid yelled for you to stop. Sorry. I thought he wanted me to put about. Thought you'd lost your tackle. I darn near lost my skin. Ignacio hadn't been so quick on his feet. Sorry. That was all I got. He just turned back to the wheel. And then, then something stuck in my memory. I kept thinking I'd, I'd seen the guy before, never talked to him, never met him, but somehow I knew his face. I looked him over, but I, I couldn't pin it down. I started back aft when all of a sudden Clara came out on deck. She rushed to the stern, looked over, then spun around and saw me. She had a strange look in her eyes. Her face was very white. Hey, what's the matter? You sick? No, I... Yes, I... I think I'm seasick. No, there is a bit of a swell. Look, stay on deck. You, you'll feel better. No. I'm going to lie down again. Okay. Gee, you look pretty bad. Come on, I'll help you down. I'm all right. Go on back up. Phew. No wonder you feel lousy. The smell, oil, and dead bait. Look, I'm not kidding. You'll feel better up there. Let me alone, will you? I... What's the matter with the engine? How should I know? Look, you take it easy. Yeah. I'll take it easy. What's wrong, Moran? Nothing serious. We'll be on our way in a few minutes. Oh. Looks, uh, looks like the fog's getting thicker. Don't you think you ought to sound the horn? Sound the blank. Oh, that's swell. This tub's in great shape. It'll do. Where's the kid? Ignacio, below hunting down the trouble. Now, look, why don't you just relax? I'll go and help him. It was a fine way to relax. Drifting in the Catalina Channel with no motor, no foghorn, and you couldn't see more than 20 feet out. After a while, I folded up with my back to the bait tank, I dozed off. When I woke up, we were still drifting. The fog was even thicker. I started to look for Moran. He, he wasn't anywhere on deck. I felt that something was wrong besides the motor. When I heard the voices, I knew it. Don't you go soft on me now. I've done my part of this. You're doing yours. I can't. I can't. You don't have any choice. I can't stall him with the bum motor gag much longer. Oh, please. I don't get it. Come crawling to me with this big idea. Why get squeamish? He's worth a lot more dead than alive. 
20 grand, isn't it? I just can't do it. Listen, baby, there's a lot of dough invested in this guy. And it's going through on schedule. And there isn't any backing out. You are listening to Over the Bounding Main. Tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Driving hazards are many for the unwary motorist. Excessive speed means more blowouts. More blowouts mean more fatalities. And since more cars are on the roads than ever, there are more fatalities than ever, too. Drive to survive. And now we bring back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. Tony Barrett, starring in tonight's production of Over the Bounding Main, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. I don't think I was scared. Not at first, that is. You can only take in so much and then something in your mind shuts it off. This fishing trip, it was Claire's idea. And the only thing she planned on hooking was a $20,000 $20,000 policy in the life of Martin Evans. I moved away and toward the stern. I needed help now. Maybe there was somebody I could count on. The young deckhand, Ignacio. I found him, all right. Sprawl on his face in the bow, lying over the anchor. Kid, kid, come on. Ignacio. Hey. Wake up, wake up. He smelled like a distillery. I shook him, slapped him as hard as I dared, but he went right on sleeping. Captain Moran had taken good care of the only friend I had. But the Mickey's poured into him, he'd be lucky if he ever woke up. And now I was good and scared. Moran would be coming up on deck. But then I remembered the gaff, a hole with a razor-sharp hook at the end. I moved to the stern quietly, feeling with my feet because I couldn't see now. And then I tripped over something, fell to the deck. It was the gaff. I grabbed it, got up. Evans! Evans! <laughs> hey, Evans! I know you're here. Evans! Evans! Can you hear me? I heard him all right. I wondered how I was to die. I had a picture of knives, guns, axes, ropes. Suddenly, something clicked into place. Rope. There was a coil of heavy rope on the forward deck. A coil of heavy rope on the forward deck. All right, Evans. You can't get very far. Getting tired? Want to go around again? Keep away from me. After all, is it my fault if a new deckhand I hire gets crazy drunk and shoots up the ship? He'll tell. He'll tell. Mutiny. Murder. (laughs) Ignacio won't even remember it. Isn't it funny what liquor will do to a kid? Penalty for mutiny is a rough one. I'm sorry he had to kill you. You won't get me! You won't get me! Lou! Lou! Is he... He decided to swim for it. Well, that saved a lot of trouble. I lay quietly on the deck. If Moran should notice the missing coil or rope, it wouldn't take him long to figure out exactly what made that splash in the water. He couldn't see any better than I could. But as soon as it got light, there I'd be. Right out in the open without a prayer. The only thing I'd gain was a few hours at the most, so I huddled against the rail and I hung on to that fishing gaff, waiting. Then I heard Claire and Moran coming out on deck. I guess that's the best way. Yeah, miss, if you don't lost it up. Those cops are smart. One little angle where our stories don't match it. Well, you just keep your head. Well, don't worry about me. All right, this is important. Now, once more. Well, not again. Once I... more! Who heard the shot? I did. And? I rushed on deck to see Ignacio struggling with Marty. Ignacio had a gun. Ignacio had a gun. He and Marty fought, and they hit the side. Marty went overboard. And our engine's dead. He just disappeared in the darkness. Right? Can't we start back? I gotta change some parts first, make it look like the engine really was out. 
You see? Every little angle counts. Well, I wish it was over. And for Pete's sake, remember, my name is Moran. And you never saw me until you got on board the Pelican. There's no way they can check. I don't even have the locket anymore. Good. I'm going to fix the engine. As soon as it gets light, we'll head back to port. The locket. I'd forgotten all about Claire's locket, but when she mentioned it, the last chunk of the puzzle dropped into the slot. And I wondered why I hadn't thought of it before. The little locket, heart-shaped, with Claire's picture on one side and Lou Barris's on the other. The one she wanted to keep for sentiment's sake. Her first husband, Lou Barris, the guy I remembered from the picture, Captain Moran, that's who he was. It all figured. Lou scores a triple play. He gets his wife back with 20 grand in a purse and pays off Martin Evans with a one-way trip to the bottom of the ocean. Then I thought of the dinghy. She was swinging from the stern about 25 feet off. It was a chance, a chance if I could get to it. I could hear Lou working on the engine. He'd done a good job when he made it quit. I only hoped it would take him a little longer to repair it. I got up, started back. The water was almost oily, and the boat laced up and down. Somehow in the dark, I found the dinghy line. I was about to pull on it when I saw Claire come on deck. I didn't move as she came toward me. Claire, if you make a sound, I'll hook this gaff right through your throat. Marty! Yeah, yeah, I returned from the dead, and I haven't anything to lose. Pull on this rope. But I... Pull on it. You and me are getting into the dinghy. All right. You had it all figured out, didn't you? But you've got one thing. Lou has to marry you again and collect the dough. And if you're not alive... Marty, please. I'm sorry. I am. Give me that rope. Don't you move. I've been wrong. I know it. Yeah, sure. I'm glad you're all right. I've been wrong about us. Don't worry. I won't kill you unless I have to. For my new insurance policy. Now, uh, get over into the boat. I can't. <laughs> sure, sure, it's little. And the ocean's big, but we're going just the same. Claire! Not a sound. Get in. Claire! She's ready to go! Smooth and neat. As long as I had a gaff at Claire's neck, Lou couldn't do a thing. His one bullet would cost him Claire 20,000 bucks, maybe his life. We drifted off a bit. I reached for the oars, but there weren't any. There weren't any oars. When I looked up, I saw Moran standing in the stern of the Pelican. Evans, I can see you. There aren't any oars, are there? That's right. You try to shoot me and Claire's a gunner, too. I got the gaff. Claire, I'm going to put him out. Don't worry. Why don't you answer him, honey? Don't you understand? I'm sorry. I don't want you to die. I want to be with you. I was wrong. I bet you were wrong. We're going to find out. We're going to paddle, paddle with our hands. If we can lose him in the fog, we'll be all right. Just remember this. If he finds me, it's too bad for you. Now, paddle. Get over on the side. Look out! Look out! She's tipping! Look out! Look. You lost it. The gaff. Yeah. Yeah, I lost it. It doesn't matter. Now, maybe you'll believe me. I want to help you get away from him. Believe you? If he finds us as soon as I see the boat, I'm going to knock you out and throw you overboard. That's how I believe you. Now, paddle. Don't be a fool! You'll drift out to sea! Once the water jumps up, you haven't got a chance! Stop paddling. Be quiet. Listen to me. Please. I love you. I'm on your side. I won't let him hurt you. Shut up! Evans! Evans! A patch of fog dissolved for a second, and in the darkness I saw a darker shape was the pelican, and I knew that Lou had seen us. I reached for Claire. Ah! I felt her shoulder, then her neck. Claire, are you all right? Yes. He's lost the gas. She was telling him to shoot me, and suddenly it didn't matter anymore. The pelican loomed over us, and Claire twisted away from me, and I didn't care. I was tired. Come on, Evans. Get up here. I want you found on deck. You first, Claire. Give me a hand. 
All right, Evans, get out of there. Get it over with. I'm staying. Give me the gun, Lou. Let me do it. Are you kidding? No, give it to me. I hate him. Oh, baby, I'll do it. You better tie the dinghy on, then. I can't hold it. Yeah, yeah, hold the gun. Give me the rope, Marty. I don't want you to drift away now. I got out of the dinghy, stood on deck looking down at what used to be Lou Barris. Claire handed me the gun and just stared at me. We didn't say anything for a long time. Fog's lifting. Yes. It's getting lighter. I guess the sun will be breaking through soon. Do you believe what I told you before? Yeah. Yeah, I, I believe you now. I'll try to make it up to you. Sure. Well, you better get going. We going back to San Pedro? Yeah. Guess I can figure out how this thing runs. Marty, what about me? Well, I got to tell the police. Oh. Maybe it won't be too tough. I, I don't know. It's all right. It's better. Marty? Yeah? Do you still care? I mean... I, I... I was gonna kill you back there, and I didn't. You figure it out. Suspense, in which Mr. Tony Barrett starred in tonight's presentation of Over the Bounding Main. Next week, the story of 12 men and women and the fate of an accused murderer. We call it The Holdout. That's next week on Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by Anthony Ellis. Tonight's script was written by Jimmy Barnett and Gloria Elmoy. The music was composed by Rennie Garrigan and conducted by Lutt Gluskin. Featured in the cast were Charlotte Lawrence, Don Diamond, and Jack Crucian. Join the FBI in Peace and War Wednesday nights on the CBS Radio Network.